So it's continuously variable in its focal length uh, across a pretty wide range. Hey everyone, uh, this is an older project that I did uh, two or three years ago but thought I would dust it off because I've got a new application for it. This is a liquid lens driver and this is a liquid lens here. So what's a liquid lens? It's, this is a, uh, an optical device that can change focal length uh, based on the electrical signal that we give it and it has no real moving parts. It's built by putting a drop of water sort of into an oil liquid and when you apply power to the lens the uh, polar is, the, the water molecules are polarized whereas the oil molecules are not so when you apply an electric field to the lens the water molecules are pulled preferentially uh, more than the oil molecules and it will change the shape of the droplet of water so if the oil and water have different uh, indices of refraction uh, the, you get a lens effect so changing the shape of the meniscus in there will change the power of the lens this is uh, actually not really new technology. Uh, the biggest company that makes these lenses is called Varioptic. So a couple years ago I got in contact with Varioptic and wanted to get some lenses and they said, oh yeah, sure, we got a development kit that costs like ten thousand dollars which is incredibly stupid, charging potential developers ten grand. Anyway, so I started looking for products that had liquid lenses in them so that I could cannibalize the products and this is one of them. This Digitus uh, USB webcam. Uh, and even more annoyingly, this is not available, or at least it wasn't available two or three years ago in the US, so I had to have these shipped in from Germany. Very expensive, stupid process to get one of these lenses. Very optic is really, I hope they've gotten better about getting their, their products into the hands of developers. Uh, but anyway, this is what the camera looks like. So there's the lens. So I cracked one of these open, and the lens um, looks like a little button. Uh, and I just sandwiched it between these two copper clad boards to make electrical contact with it. So inside here, one of these copper clad boards is one electrode, and the other is, is the other electrode. So to drive one of these lenses, you need a fair amount of voltage. Uh, the lens is connected directly to this chip, which is a specialized uh, liquid lens driver chip. It's an HV892, made by Supertex. This was also a difficult chip to get and it's a difficult to solder package. It's a surface mount and I couldn't find any standard breakout boards for this particular layout. So I actually had to have this breakout board made uh, just, just to get the pins accessible. Uh, the nice thing is that the chip doesn't require very many external components. Just three capacitors is it. Uh, one downside is that the chip only works with I squared C. You can't really just give it an analog voltage or, or send it a um, a serial or parallel data signal. It has to be I squared C. So I'm using an Arduino just to send it the I squared C data. Uh, someone wrote a uh, an I squared C library called Wire for Arduino, which is why I'm using it. And I didn't really feel like learning about I squared C for this. Okay, so let me uh, set this thing up and use it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so there you can see that the the lens is changing focal length. I've got the camera lens fixed so it won't try to autofocus on us. And I'm dialing it in and out with the potentiometer that's on this control box here. So it's pretty neat to be able to change a lens's focal length. Uh, it, it has quite a large range too. I'll have to get the spec, but it really goes quite far. It's, it's, it's able to, to um, focus at many different uh, focal lengths. And the optical quality is, you know, not bad. So if I move closer to the camera, Eventually it should go out of focus again and then I'll be able to compensate. Let's see. Ooh, getting a little dark here. You can see it's still sharp. We're losing a light because the lens is relatively small in diameter. Pretty neat. And if I turn the potentiometer uh, all the way down, um, my program just cycles through all the different, uh, all of the available focal lengths automatically. So I was thinking of building my own liquid lens that would be quite large, like maybe three inches in diameter, maybe even bigger, like a ship's portal. I think it would be really cool to have a window that could change focal length, uh, you know, maybe not as quite through as large of a range as that little lens, but at least to make it interesting. Uh, the problem is the two fluids are quite specialized. They have to have the same density so that when you turn the lens vertically or horizontally, the meniscus doesn't change shape. 
Uh, one has to be polar, one has to be nonpolar, and they have to have different indices of refraction so that you actually get a good lensing effect. And having all these uh, properties is actually pretty difficult. I mean, the densities really have to be the same. They have to be tuned, uh, mixed, so that they come out just right. So I'm looking into that, and they have to be immiscible, of course, too. Obviously, if they mix together, that would ruin the whole thing. So I'm looking into that, and you also need very high voltages to drive the bigger lens, too, because the, uh, the pull exerted on the uh, liquid interface uh, you know, goes down with a square of distance. So you need a lot more voltage to make a bigger lens work, as far as I know. This is actually uses a principle called electro-wetting, which may not require quite as much voltage, but I'll put some links in the description there. You could also run one of these lenses off just plain old AC voltage. You don't really need this specialized chip for it. Uh, the reason that the voltage should be AC is so that the lens fluids don't become polarized. So if you made one electrode positive all the time and the other electrode negative, uh, the fluid itself can charge up and the lens would kind of drift over time. So instead, if you flip the uh, polarity of the thing, it won't change the optical properties because the um, electric field would be the same and the pull exerted on the fluid would be the same but you won't have polarization effects so this thing this chip tops out at about 60 volts for this size lens and um, obviously you could just get a 60 volt AC source and run it that way too okay hope this was helpful see you next time bye